Hello everyone. In the prior session, we discussed how a corporation, how a company issues stocks to shareholders, to investors, to owners of the company in exchange for cash. So the owner gives the company cash, the company will give them back common stock ownership in the company. Great. In this session, what we will do, in a sense, the opposite or rewarding those investors that invested in the company. Now the company is going to give cash back to the shareholder in form of cash dividend. What is cash dividend? Cash dividend is a payment made by a company to its shareholders, to the owners, to the stockholders that issued, that that bought the stocks of the company that they were issued earlier. And dividend is paid from profit. So when the company makes a profit, they reward the shareholders. So when investors invest money in the business, in the company, they do so with the expectation of what? Earning a return. Earning a return on their investment in the company's common stock. A cash dividend is one of the most common ways to fulfill their expectation, especially when the company achieve a profit. The company makes a profit, they don't keep the money. Let's assume the company made a profit of a million dollars. They may decide to distribute 300,000 or 30% to shareholders. If you're a shareholder, if you invested in that company, you will get a proportionate share of that 300,000. Now bear in mind, the source of dividend is retained earnings. And what's the source of retained earning? The company's profitability. So always remember, the idea of dividend is coming out of profit, coming out of net income. And net income is first part in retained earnings. So that's why when we pay dividend, we reduce retained earnings because the assumption is it's coming out of the earning that we are retaining. Now, if you pay dividend and you don't have retained earnings, it's called something else. It's called liquidating dividend or return of capital. It's beyond the scope of this course. But the point is dividend is important. Why? Because when you invest in a company, you expect two things. You expect to receive dividend and you expect your stock price, the, the stock price, the stock price that you paid for that company when they, when they, when they sold you the stock to go up. So the declaration of dividend, the expectation of dividend, the expectation that the company will declare dividend would drive the stock price up. And shareholders often look forward for the dividend payment, especially when that dividend is raised and the promise to raise it more. Now, how dividend affect the stock price? Again, it's beyond the scope of this course. It's covered in my corporate finance if you're interested. But in this session specifically, we'll focus on the accounting aspect of cash dividend. So when the company declares dividend, what do we have to do from an accounting perspective? What journal entry do we have to make on certain key element dates? And we'd look at those key element dates in the example. So the best way to illustrate this is to take a look, to take a look at an in-depth example. And at the end of the session, we would look at a multiple choice question from Farhat Lectures to reinforce the concept. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website. Give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. We will start by looking at key elements of cash dividend. And specifically, we have to look at key dates. Those are the elements of the cash dividend. There are three key dates that you need to understand 
the meaning of each date and what happened on that particular date. The three dates are the first one is the declaration date. As the word suggests, it's the declaration date. This is when the company's board of directors, the people who are who are in charge of the company formally announces the dividend. Basically, they will come out and they would say, we declared, we decided to pay dividend, for example, $2 per share for each shareholder. Once they make this announcement, they create a legal obligation to pay. Simply put, the company will have to record a liability. Now, we're, we will see the journal entry on the second page. The first thing I want you to see is, once you declare it, you have a liability. Now, when you declare it, you have to have retained earnings. Simply put, dividend is paid out of the profit. And the profit for a company is parked into an account called retained earnings. So you have to have some retained earnings in order to pay it out. So that's going to be kind of given. But this is what we have to know. We have to have retained earnings. Then the second date is the date of record. What happens on this date? On this date, the company identifies which shareholder are eligible to receive the dividend. So if you own the stock on this particular date, you will get your dividend. Simply put, you can identify yourself. I am an owner. You will get the dividend. Now, the good thing about this date, there, are, there is no financial transaction. Therefore, there is no journal entry. It's purely administrative process where they review the owners of the stock for the company. And the third date is the payment date, and it doesn't need any clarification. This is when the dividend is actually paid. This is when the investor that were identified get their money. They receive their money. They may either receive a check. They might receive the money in their brokerage account. They might when you declare the dividend. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to actually look at those step by step, starting with step one, the declaration date. Here's what happened on the declaration date. The company creates a liability, reducing retained earnings. So let's walk through an example. Assume a company has already 600000 and retained earnings. Remember I told you, you have to have retained earnings. What's retained earnings? Re retained earnings is your cumulative earnings over the years. So over the years, company generated net income. As they generate net income profit, it's, it's closed into retained earnings. And the company declared $300,000 in dividend. Simply put, they are going to pay $300,000 out of the retained earnings to shareholders. So on the declaration date, remember we have an obligation, we debit retained earnings, we reduce retained earnings, dividend comes out of retained earnings, we reduce retained earnings, and we create a liability of 300 called dividend payable. Now in some textbook, they may call this dividend. Okay, they may call it dividend, they will close it later on, but we're going to call it dividend payable, which is a liability. So this entry shows, shows that the company committed to distributing 300000 Now they have an obligation. Now what does that mean? It means they still have $300,000 in retained earnings. The date of record, what do, we do, what do we do on date of record? No journal entry. The date of record is important to determine who's, who's going to be receiving part of the 300. There's no journal entry. It's simply a cutoff point to decide who would receive it. So let me give you some dates so this way you are familiar with this. For example, let's assume today's date is March 1st. This is the declaration date. The date of record, it would say something like this. On March 10th, you have to be on record on March 10th. So to be on record, if you are an owner of this company, owner means on record, date of record, you're on record March 10th, you will get the dividend. And March 20th will make the payment. On March 20th, we will make the payment. What do we do when we make the payment? Well, you should know what we do What we make the payment. We are going to remove our obligation. Remove the obligation that we made when we created the dividend. We remove the obligation. And we send the cash, credit the cash, to send the cash to the shareholders, to the people who are on record as of 
March 10th for our purpose. At this point, the entire process comes to a full circle and the company has rewarded its investor by distributing by distributing some of the dividend that they can enjoy. Now, let me ask you this. What if the company has a Deficit. Now, what is a deficit? A deficit means, you remember we had a $600,000 in retained earnings? This is a credit balance. Well, over the years, the company could have $600,000 on the debit side. At the debit side for retained earnings, it means the company over the years, they had net losses. Or if they had any net income, they paid it out and they incur more losses. So not every company will have a positive retained earnings. Now, they should, if you, if you operate, you can survive so long without having a positive retained earning. A deficit occur when the company has accumulated losses or paid dividend greater than its profit over the years. When retained earning goes negative, it means a debit, it has a debit balance, we call it a deficit. Okay, now this while rare, understanding this concept is crucial since some companies do, fa do face financial trouble. And they may dig into the reserves to pay dividend. Now you're saying, so we cannot pay dividend if we don't have retained earning. And the answer, yes, you could still pay dividend, but you have to call it something else. You might have to call it a liquidating dividend. What does that mean? It means you are not paying dividend from the profit. Remember, the concept of dividend is rewarding the shareholders from the profit. So if you don't have a profit, you don't have retained earnings over the years, you don't have a credit balance, what are you doing then? What you are doing is you are liquidating the company and returning people's money. Now, this is important, especially when you take, if you're an accounting student, when you take your tax course, because this distribution of dividend are not taxable. Why not? Because they're giving you back your money. They're not rewarding you. That, that's a topic for a different discussion for a different class. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. Which of the following refers to the date that the directors vote to declare and pay dividend? So remember, we have three important date, date of declaration, date of matter, date of payment, and date of record. Well, and date of stockholders meeting. It doesn't matter when they meet. That's not that's not what we're referring to. We are referring to the to the time that they declare. And basically, it's, if you read it, it's date of declaration. That's correct. Remember on the date of declaration, we debit retained earning, we reduce retained earning, and we increase dividend payable. We have a liability date of record, no entry, not applicable. And the date of payment, we debit the payable and we credit cash. Now this is this is dividend payable goes down, cash goes down. So this is a cash dividend. Is this the only type of dividend we have? Absolutely not. We have also stock dividend. So the company, rather than distributing cash, they could distribute stocks in proportion of the shareholders portion of the company. They could also distribute other assets other than stocks. Well, what do you need to do? If you are an accounting student or studying for a CPA, CMA, professional certification, Farhat Lectures is where you need to be. We have additional lectures, multiple choice, practice questions that will help you. Invest in yourself. That's the best investment you make that will pay you dividend for years to come. Investing in yourself. Good luck. Study hard and, of course, stay safe.